Okay, yeah, here. Um, so, uh, it's episode three. Um, chronologically, we just uploaded our first episode. Thank you, everyone who, who's given a listen so far. It's, uh, Yay! it's marvelous. Oh, I'm a or... podcaster now. Woo! I, I need to develop my vocal fry. I've, I keep meaning to try and talk in a lower register, a very smooth, hairy shear. You want to sound like voice. Ira Glass or something? I I'm only dimly aware of. Who, he's like NPR or something. Yeah, he's like he's the guy who has like male vocal fry. Um, but when we talk about vocal fry, we always just think of either the Kardashians or like the Red Scare Girls as your standard vocal fry females. But uh, we're not here to talk about vocal fry registers no we're here to we're here to talk about a completely different type of of ridiculous voice um but first who 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 are we uh i'm tyrell james aka discourse stew and i'm the joker baby nicole and this is marvelous or the death of cinema and Uh, today we're we're finally eating some good fucking food Quest, this, question mark question mark slash period so it's uh so from the beginning i've always wanted to cover kind of the, the wider world of mega franchises superhero stuff but just like other attempts to replicate the marvel formula or just kind of what the blockbuster has become in the last 10 15 years and i thought we should do the Dark Knight. It's, it's the same year as iron man and even though the the it's uh, the nolan stuff's like a self-contained trilogy it set the tone for like what it, it, what what, what kind of like the the mirror version of what Marvel like like what DC stuff would be what a superhero movie that isn't doing the farm, Marvel formula pardon would look like and that's this movie um, and I I'm assuming like everybody's seen it it was it was huge when it came out uh, it's was it? it's heralded as one of the greatest films of all time which. We can definitely debate that because um, it's, like, really high up on, like, you ask the average person, like, Joe Schmo or whatever, and they probably have a very positive opinion of this movie. Um, But it's something, like, crazy. It's, like, number 18 or something on, like, the letterbox top, like, 250 narrative films. Like, it's higher than a lot of other movies. Wait, let let me double check what... It is, yeah, but it is, I was right on the money. It's number 18. Um, like, a, sitting at a 4.4, which is really fucking high. After it came out, I remember famously it, like, shot, it, it displaced The Godfather or Shawshank Redemption uh, or whatever it was as, like, the top of the the very prestigious IMDb ratings. <laughs> very prestigious. But people very, did. We, very, it's very we exclusive. loved this movie when it came out. And then, uh, obviously, within a few years, there was a backlash to everyone loving it and to, like, Nolan's later stuff. Uh, no, I mean, among people who care, have opinions about movies, there's definitely, like, a... You wouldn't, you wouldn't oh, know Dark Knight it isn't these days. <laughs> that good. Um, blah, blah, blah. And, and, I mean, I think it was... I mean, it, it is definitely, like, there's the hype of the... Um, and that happens with movies. Everybody sees it, and they, they you get hyped up for it. You all hype each other up after you see it. I don't think it's one of the greatest movies ever no. made. Like yeah. Heat no, it's is, not. is the, the movie it's like most borrowing from Heat is a better version of, of kind of the same, not the same movie, but the same vibe. But it is still a really good movie. I, I a, liked it. I was really surprised how much I still like it. I, I I was going in expecting to really like, oh, this this doesn't hold up. All this stuff falls apart, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, actually, no, this still holds together really good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I... Heath Ledger really was that good. It wasn't just yeah, him dying. Yeah, I mean, dying. you... I would definitely not put this on, like, the level of, you know, other sort of canonically called greatest films of all time. Like, you put this... To me, you compare this to, like, Vertigo. I'm going Vertigo every single time. Like, this is not in the tier of a Vertigo or, like, a Citizen Kane or... Any of those films to me? Yeah, I mean it's 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 no uh, it's it's no um, uh, James Cameron's Aliens, but it's no Aliens. Um, it's no RoboCop, but it the things that make it a solid 
and at the very least entertaining movie are all more than there. And again, yeah. we can't talk about we can't talk about this movie without, you know, bringing up Heath Ledger. I mean, he and is it's, the movie. He's he's the he's reason the movie that itself. This, like the, the the reason that this is an like and I, I, I and I and I'll say it just very matter of fact, you like this is an iconic movie and it's got a lot of iconic lines and moments in it and most of them belong to Ledger. Yeah, well he had two really big tasks at his disposal and of, of course again like the fact that he died very prematurely and tragically just 6 months before the film was released really put that shadow and expectation and sort of um mystique around this movie but the two big like the biggest thing he had to do was play an iteration of the Joker that was not Jack Nicholson's um, because I believe up until the Joker, I'm not sure if this is still true, but I think at one point Jack Nicholson had financial stake in any sort of Joker merchandise that was produced. I, I have no idea, but it wouldn't surprise because that was like, I think it's, and I mean, if you're under a certain age, like I'm right at the cusp of being old enough to like remember the Tim Burton Batman. I haven't seen it actually. Um, I've seen, I've seen this the like sequel with um Catwoman of Bat- course. That- Batman Batman Returns is is the much better movie. Um uh Batman 89 is fine. It's got some like fun art direction and set design stuff, but Batman Returns is is the much more interesting film, I think. But like Jack Nicholson's Joker was was in in its time like very also considered very iconic. Yeah. You can see a lot of if once you watch it, you'll recognize a lot of like 90s references to it. Um, and stuff. And that was, yeah, like going into this movie, if, if you're old enough to remember at least like I, like, like I saw Batman Returns as like a tiny, tiny baby. Cause that came out the year after I was born. And then, but the 89 Batman, like movies that come out just a few years before you're born, they're on home video, they're on TV all the time. You're kind of in their echo boom. Um, right. still. Like right, my, yeah. like I remember, like my, like the 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 uh, Batman the animated series in the nineties used the Danny Elfman theme from the movie, and um, the the later those um, Joel Schumacher movies were still nominally sequels to the yeah Burton oh ones. yeah the, um, yeah the one where Batman has uh, nipples yeah uh, that's um that's a dis- <laughs> that could be that could be another choice. potential bonus episode. <laughs> I the th- okay the thing about um because we can just talk about Batman generally like I think we, everyone's seen this movie I yeah don't we think can we talk need a little bit about Batman we can just kind of range all over um because the, the there's been some people try to reappraise um Batman and Robin as like a camp classic and it's there's a parallel universe where it is but it's not it's it's like partly one but then partly trying to be a '90s blockbuster it's trying to have its melodrama and its big special effects action sequences that look really terrible now um and it can't be all those things at once it's just too bloated in in, in another universe where they committed to the camp thing and didn't try to be all those other things and it was like a movie that came in under two hours yes but uh right but i do like like this like the stuff like the bat nipples that that is the stuff in that movie that is like in that parallel universe one that rules. So like Joel Schumacher is extremely gay, and all of his movies are, are very, <laughs> very yeah. Gay, and it rules. I mean, I mean, he did cast gay actor Michael Douglas in Falling Down, which is. I'm sorry, guys. This is going to be the first of uh, several Come Town references I am going to make because watching this movie, The Dark Knight is great, but it's nowhere near as good as the the Come Town bit. Where they're talking about uh, having Batman choose between saving Rachel but letting Dent fuck her or fucking Bat- uh, Joker and his <laughs> asshole, which has been sewn shut. I, um, I always think about Kamichin or Gordon. Kamichin or Gordon. <laughs> I, I don't normally like to um, to do too we're, much. We're not we're not trying to be podcasts, a come town affiliated podcast, but but that is just it, and that just that bit did always really make me laugh. Um, for, for it's just. It's just Rachel, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. Like, the, oh my like god, this... my 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 sound, my audio and audacity just like blew up. <laughs> Mike did not like that. It's uh, 
the, the Bale Batman voice is just a little too much. I, it, it is a little a little silly for, it, for this movie that, that's trying not to be that silly. But isn't that like how Batman is supposed to sound? He's supposed to sound very gruff. And of course, the idea is... But it's it's a very he's, af- he's disguising his identity. Yeah. And if he had like a voice voice modulator, it would end up sounding like Bane or something. It's, which I don't know if it's we'll a ever- very affected, um, yeah. gruff. Uh, it's just a little too like guy trying to sound gruff. It doesn't sound quite natural enough. A little bit, yeah. Um, but like I mean, I don't know. Like I always thought. Um, and I mean, uh, Michael Keaton is is kind of doing. A bat is doing a Batman voice in those uh, Tim Burton ones. That's that's a little goofy too. But I, I think he's a great. Actually, I don't know. like like the the Bruce Wayne like 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 when he's not Batman is an underused part of Batman, and he can be really interesting. Like like Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne is like kind of like an like like a kind of absent minded uh, kind of autistic y guy, mm-hmm. um, which I always really liked, and I like. And you don't get, you never get nearly enough of it in these movies. But I like, uh, I like Christian Bale best in in these movies when he's Bru- when he when he's Bruce Wayne playing Bru- when he's like Bruce Wayne playing Bruce Wayne the Playboy, and he's kind of channeling like because this is the guy that played Patrick Bateman, which was always kind of yeah on paper a kind of inspired casting choice. And when he's kind of doing like Bruce Wayne playing in quotes Bruce Wayne the billionaire, and he's kind of doing the Patrick Bateman thing. I always thought that worked really good. We just never get more than a few minutes of it. Yeah, although although in terms of like, I mean, again, we're we're coming off fairly recently from rewatching Iron Man, so it's just sort of comparing Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne in my brain just inevitably happened. Um, they are, it, yeah, they are kind of mirror images. Being they're like, mirror images. It just seems that uh, Tony Stark knows how to have fun more. Whereas, of course, Bruce Wayne is, you know, this dour emo billionaire boy who even even when we see him like flocked with girls coming off of, you know, the boat with the entire Russian ballet, he still you never really see him like mucking it up the way or having this sort of like playboy persona, outwardly playboy persona, at least in comparison to Tony Stark. Yeah, well, um, it, well, Tony Stark is that guy, whereas Bruce Wayne yeah. is like pretending to be that guy in public. Yeah, when really he just cares about being Batman. Um, but I, I, um, that's the thing. Like Batman can be, and in, in, in a not, I mean, I think campy Batman is a totally fine, fun way to do Batman too. But um, Batman can be funny. Like, like you just a little. This movie is a little bit funnier than I remembered it being. Yeah, there and, are and not just funny the Joker lines. stuff. Like there, there, there are some. There, there's more of a, a a a sense of humor in this movie, and it's not really quippy. There's a little, a little tiny bit. It's just there's movies there's, are some like that. there's some wry, there's some but sometimes a little dry. Which which I think like Batman as kind of like a dry and laconic, Lee funny works pretty good. Like yeah, like to go like Batman the series, Like we're talking about the Batman voice and stuff. Like I, like that from what I remember, and it's I all. haven't watched it in a long time. I watched some episodes more recently than childhood, been a long time. But it was like he was like, like he does have two different voices, but they like it's more of like a smooth, low baritone Batman voice, mm-hmm. not like gruff. Um, but he is like like the Bruce like 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 as Batman, he's kind of um a, like a little bit laconic, and then as Bruce Wayne, he's he's a little cheeky, like like mm-hmm. not goofy or or really can't be aside from just how innately can't be a Saturday morning cartoon is but like he does know how to have fun without being like a party animal you know he's got kind of women in and out um okay yeah see I I didn't watch the animated series growing up I wasn't was it, like was it a little before your time it no it wasn't before my time it was just I didn't watch it um, I wasn't really in because I know it it aired on WB Kids if I yes. remember correctly. Um, I just I just never watched it. I do remember, um, like one of my childhood friends. I he had like a VHS tape, not of the Batman animated series, but I remember it was a VHS tape and oh one there of was the a, one like of the movies? preview. No, well, there was oh. a preview on it for I think it was uh, the Batman Beyond movie. 
Uh, the oh, one where, they which did is, do a movie of which that. Which is yeah, not centered on it. Bruce Wayne. It's like his protege who takes oh, up the mantle, if I'm Yeah, correct. Batman Beyond was, I think, most of the same creative team. It's like a direct okay. sequel to the animated series. It's set okay. like 40, 50 years. It's like set in like a cyberpunk, uh, oh, slightly anime, like Akira influenced Blade Runner future city. And it's like Batman's okay. old. He, he, like, the it starts with a yeah. flash. I saw the like I saw like a like a comedy edit of the like a comedy dub edit of uh, the pilot like, episode like on a, YouTube like recently. Like Dragon Ball Z abridged, a, a like bit, a- yeah. <laughs> and it was pretty funny, but it, it reminded me because I did watch it as a kid, and um, he it starts it opens with 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 like Batman. He's getting older. It's like a flashback, and he uh, he fucks up uh, stopping some bad guys and resorts to using a gun and kills someone, and then he retires. And then you go forward another undisclosed number of decades and this, you know, kind of do-gooder but punkish uh, kid uh, um, mishaps his way into meeting Batman and and takes up the mantle of being the new Batman in, in okay. cyberpunk Gotham. And it's it's pretty good. It's It's got some fun future stuff. Um, from what I remember, it was pretty good. I mean, Batman the Animated Series okay. is like like I don't know if people want to be the like oh I'm gonna go watch a cartoon from my childhood but it's of 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 the cartoons of that era and that type it was probably the best yeah um, and, it sounds uh, interesting both it and both it and beyond like if you're just if you're into animation generally like they've got for a for a weekly for a weekly broadcast cartoon they've got some of the best kind of most polished animation. Um, so do you want to kind of get more into the the guts of this movie? Yeah, so, so a little more because again, as always, I took my notes. Although I, you know, if this is a this movie is long, this movie is the exact same runtime as um, Suspiria twenty eighteen. So it's over two and a half hours. Um, that is, and, that, and you have I, a. Oh, I was supposed to say, I was surprised how much I liked Suspiria twenty eighteen. Oh, that might be perfect. worth uh, when we if if, if, if and when we start doing just episodes about whatever is a side thing. I, I would want to do like a Suspiria versus Suspiria. <laughs> Suspiria one versus Suspiria. Not just for, but compare um, and contrast. Like we do both yeah. as like one thing. Um, um, but yeah, no, this movie is long. Um, and eventually I did sort of start to feel it. Then again, I, I've seen this movie multiple times, not for a long time, but you know, it would also was one of those movies that would play a lot on cable television a couple years after it, came out so i'd always catch at least bits and pieces of it um so it's so it's it's familiar to me although there are things that even like in the early parts of the movie um that are i so full disclosure i have not seen batman begins which i think and i don't and by i think i mean i think and this is not a reflection on anyone else i can i am completely liable to be wrong but my impression was that a lot of people who went and saw the dark knight didn't see batman begins i mean by the uh you know i'm, I'm kind of curious because because the dark knight was the highest grossing movie of 2008 yeah also i, I was just I, I was looking it up to make sure because it's like it doubled iron it didn't double iron man but it was above it by like a 200 million um Indiana jones in the kingdom of the crystal skull was third um, <laughs> Two th- 2008 number- was a year. <laughs> okay, number. Guess what number four is coming up just behind um, Indiana Jones. Or no, actually was- no, like a hundred million dollars behind Indiana Jones, but number four. It's a movie Wally? that everyone. No, it's a movie everybody has forgotten it exists. But it has one of the biggest stars of the last thirty years of film in it. It's above. It's just above Wally. <sighs> it's not animated. It's not animated. Okay. It has a huge star in the lead. Give me another hint. Uh, it is, what kind of it star is, is also, it? It is also superhero related. Oh, sorry. Was like, it Hulk? No, not Hulk. Beloved, no. beloved blockbuster mainstream charismatic actor who started on TV. I'm stumped. I'm sorry. Um, it's a superhero film, but it's not an existing property. My super ex girlfriend. <laughs> No, well, that's I another movie that's, no one's thought about for the last like that, that's fifteen cl- years. That's kind of close, but but I was I'm shocked that this movie was actually that huge because I didn't I remember. I feel like it was forgotten right away. Hancock with Will oh, Smith. Oh, 
Will Smith. Yeah, okay. Yeah, where Will Smith's like a washed up superhero. Okay. Yeah, um, which has like one joke I remember thinking was really funny from it, even though it's like taken from Mall Rats, where he's like fucking a girl and he has to throw her off of him, and then he like nuts through the ceiling of his the trailer he's in. <laughs> like a, that's a, a, awesome. That's, okay, that's, you know, that's the only part. Of the, I feel like that movie was like the first third when they're doing the like burned out, failed superhero stuff is good, but then it like derails into like their their act the superheroes are actually angels from the dawn of time and he forgot his identity and then there's just a bunch of like actual like like the 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 nadir of people throwing each other into buildings cgi no consequences super like the movie just goes off the rails halfway through okay and and completely abandons its initial premise okay so Sort of let's let's kind of start at the beginning. Um, yeah, sorry. This, was, anyway, this, Batman, this movie Batman opens pretty really fine. strong. This movie opens really strong, and it does um some like it does something I really really like when movies do is have a really good sort of actiony sequence at the very beginning. So we have the famous bank heist scene. Th- this is where is the we- this is where the Michael Mann like in heat influence is really really strongly felt yeah i haven't i haven't seen heat i've watched a couple michael mann movies this year um well actually last year i watched manhunter and just like last week i watched uh thief which is fucking excellent oh thief um, but thief slash my, i haven't yeah, seen manhunter is, but thief thief yeah thief but is this great. this having even just seen like two of michael mann's movies this opening scene really had his uh like feel to it um yeah so yeah like, like like just like just the way everything looks the, the edit like the, i feel like the, really the reason this movie works is just that i think it is the editing like this this movie is so long and it's constantly threatening to implode under the weight of all its moving parts or get bogged down it's like a like a smack truck going up a steep hill it almost stalls out but it it doesn't and then it picks up steam again it's i think it's because it was really aggressively edited and the every, editing is so good it's it's, it's really it's so tight, tight. And it, it it the plot almost threatens incoherence at points, like like yeah, uh, we'll, like the we'll kidnapping, get to that yeah, very of, soon. Um, Aaron Eckhart is like it's just like it's like like Commissioner Gordon gets a phone call and then it's like we're dealing with that, but it it's for the best. It right, keeps, it, um, it keeps the movie uh, moving. But yeah, so if there's one thing I've learned as both like a movie watcher and a movie discusser. <laughs> Is that when it when it comes to movies, you really need to pay attention to your opening scenes. And I I really like to listen out for certain bits of dialogue. Um, and of course, because this this movie, more than being a movie about Batman or even Harvey Dent, this this is a movie where the core of it belongs to the Joker. And there's a little bit of dialogue at the beginning exchange between like two of the um like clown thugs that the Joker is, you know hired to help rob this bank and of course the twist is he's like told everyone in this gang oh if you kill off everyone else you can have your own share which in turn allows you know the joker to be the last man standing get away with all the cash um there are these two clown thugs one of them says like you know why do they call him the joker and the other says to scare people uh criminals in this town used to believe in things honor respect what do you believe in that's yeah, another well, yeah, bit of William, dialogue William spoken Fichtner. by like one of the bankers. Yeah, it's, it's William um, Fickner. Uh or Fitchner. Okay. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh you'll see him on like uh TV shows a lot. Uh good, okay, good he character. He looked actor. a little familiar. He's 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 got a distinctive look. Um Okay. Um uh, but yeah, like once once you see him, once once you recognize him, you'll start seeing him around kind of guy. But yeah, no, that that opening high scene is um just very well paced um and quite at times there was like I was consciously thinking to myself, God damn, this is a PG thirteen movie. Cause there there are like little moments of violence, especially just throughout this film that is just so dark in comparison to what we have for superhero movies nowadays. It it, it does have it does have for so for not having any cynical. blood, basically. It it manages to have pretty effectively impactful violence. Um, yeah. Which is one of those like things where I'm kind of like, God, it like one, it's impressive that they do it. But on the other hand, I'm just like, God, I wish there was just some big bloody 
uh, RoboCop squibs going off with people. Yeah, shot. yeah, so cool. that is that is true. But it didn't. And I'm 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 a gore hound. I'm I'm like you know, give me head explosions, give me people getting their arms ripped off and being beaten with it. I I fucking love excessive violence, and I do not apologize. But here it it. Like, I think if it had just become, like, a gory bloodbath, it really would have undermined the dramatic aspect at play between, like, a lot of the characters and especially, you know, the Joker. Like, although, you know, the, you know, want to see how I make a pencil disappear, that is still pretty, like, that I, is wouldn't, great. I wouldn't say graphic, but it's it still made me cringe. Yeah, well, that, yeah that's the thing. It's not, you're not seeing a lot you're not seeing any blood basically you're not seeing a lot of violence but the the editing the sound design the the uh the kind of punctuation yes, on it. it still make it feel pretty visceral which is i uh, pretty impressive it's, the, it's I think. the circumstantial sort of aspects that make it feel very both grounded and visceral um but sort of to go back to what you said about you know, think the narrative component being confusing at times. There is that early scene where the scarecrow shows up that even when I looked, like I just looked it up before we started recording, I'm still confused as to what was really going down oh, in that, that scene. That, that um, he's just, he's, at the end of Batman Begins, I don't think he's caught. He's still on the loose. He's the main yeah. villain. He's one of the two main villains of the uh, the 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 first one, and then he's just selling his fear gas to drug dealers because he's okay. Doesn't this really a- have a plan. That's he's so just selling is- his fear gas yeah. to drug dealers, and they're pissed off at him because it's it's not really a great product. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that was, to my understanding, I was like, is this a drug deal gone wrong? And then there's some guy who shows up cosplaying Batman, although it's not really like the editing kind of makes it seem at first that there's just one Batman. He's just kind of in the shadow. And then Bruce Wayne, the actual Bruce Wayne shows up. Um, but it's like so quick. I like, it's hard to sort of get a grab. Yeah, on what's the, you happening. Have to be, you have to be paying uh, attention or certain plot points will slip by because the movie is just trying to not run out of steam. Because it is, because you, you can, I think there's probably like an hour of cut material. Oh, um, easily. I I feel this this movie. If I were to have a DVD or Blu-ray copy, um, with like all the f- fixins on it, it would probably have a good amount of like deleted or extended scene features. Um, yeah, like and, like if yeah. this movie came out now, we would have gotten the three hour version, and it would be more <laughs> release like the Nolan more, cut. It would have more stuff in it, but it would be a slog and it would run out of steam and it would fall apart. Um, yeah, it would it would be it would just be too much. Um, and again, like I this is a my my final take on this. This is a still a pretty good movie, you know, solid four out of five, not quite not deserving of being called like the greatest. Movie no, no, of all it's time. it's uh, but. You know, there are parts of this where I, you know, started getting a little antsy, like I got up and sort of watered my plants or whatever. But I don't know if that was necessarily just me um, having already like seen this movie before and sort of knowing the gist of what would happen next or just me being uh, a little bit ADHD. I, but, I think yeah, it's, that, that it's scarecrow both, scene was very confusing. And I think and again, this is coming from someone who has not seen Batman Begins. So I guess this this is probably this is from what you're describing a continuation of some sort of plot point in that movie. It's I I, I just inferred from context like because they say like hey you you sold us this product and all it doesn't make people freak out and he's like well if you don't like my product don't buy it then it's it's like it's quick <laughs> but it's do you just you just basically need to know that the scarecrow is a guy who makes a fear drug and he's still okay, running around yeah. as of the end of the. Uh, but last more movie. importantly, this scene sets up a very, uh, very or somewhat important plot point, which is that uh, Batman needs new armor because dogs bite him. Uh, I guess the the guy that Scarecrow is selling this gas to, he's credited as the Chechnyan. So he's some one of like the major mob bosses. He has just Rottweilers and he releases them on uh, Batman. Batman kind of struggles which in turn 
makes him go to Lucius Fox um, to be like, hey, I need a suit redesign. I also want a suit that allows me to turn my head, which is clearly a nod to Keaton Batman and the fact yeah, that, cause that he couldn't, especially the, the man the, could not turn his head in that suit. In the 80, it's right, did you really see it in the 89 movie where he's just rotating at the shoulders? <laughs> like, and it, it's once you once you notice it, it's very comical. <laughs> he he graduated from the Kermit the Frog school of acting. Yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's like, it's everything from the ear tips down to his shoulders is just one piece. And I, and I think even in Batman Begins, like, the suit was a bit stiff. And this is like, we're justifying our costume change that, that gives him mobility. And then also, it's like, well, he's got more weak points. So we can make him a little more. I think it's kind of like, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of kind of meta plot uh, stuff. And, and none of this is to say that, uh, this version of Batman doesn't have his funny moments because I specifically wrote that Batman is kind of a comic genius because at least within like the first half hour, he keeps doing this thing where he just pops up out of nowhere. Like there's the scene where commissioner Gordon is going into the uh, bank hall and he's, you know, talking to his partner and suddenly they cut and Batman's just standing there. I I like that a lot. Actually. I like, I, I like the, the, the very, the very dry, uh, humor of Batman just appearing and disappearing. Um, it's it's funny. Not not beginning or ending conversations. <laughs> yeah, he Batman will not be excused. The, you know, you know, teachers like the bell doesn't excuse me. You, I do, and Batman's like I'm already fucking gone. Um, but yeah, that in addition, sort of the um, going back to sort of the dog. Thing there's he has a little bit of uh, a quippy dialogue exchange with uh, I think it's with it's with uh, Alfred where you know he's talking about you know the need to upgrade his armor um, you know he mentions like yeah I got mauled, mauled by a dog and Alfred's like a dog and Bruce is like a big dog and it, and then earlier after you know he apprehends Scarecrow and ties up the like cosplaying Batman guy, he's like, the that guy's like, well, there's what? What's the difference between you and me? And and Bruce is like, I don't wear hockey pads. Yeah, yeah, he's like these. So, so this this Batman does have his funny moments. Yeah, like there's there's little like it, like it's 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 more kind of a little wry and dry, which I think it's like how if you're not doing a really campy Batman, how it kind of. Uh, it should be he's laconic. Um, but it was like I re- I remembered these movies being more dour, a bit more dour than they actually are. Um, although yeah. part of that's just kind of that's kind of where it ends up because it's a it's supposed to be a tragedy in the in the third act. Um, yeah, and also cause... it's it's very like the look of it has a lot of very crime and like specifically like film noir crime aspects to it like you have you see that really clearly in the interrogation scenes the fact that we're looking at the seedy underworld like the big bad at least initially to batman is the fact that the mob is basically running gotham's underworld batman hates the goddamn mob batman would hate tony soprano basically um but you I see those influences. I have watched a, I watched a fair bit of noir movies in preparation for reviewing a book on film noir I did for the website I write for. Um, and so I was, you know, specifically looking out for all those titular stylistic aspects, you know, you could, like the Venetian blinds, a lot of shadows, uh, just the, the aspect on, you know, law enforcement and their, you know, corrupt, component as well as the you know sort of moralistic gray areas of the criminal underworld and that's that's all there um granted it is really glossy um under yes. like Chris Christopher Nolan's hands because I believe this is one of the earliest movies where a good chunk of it was shot with like a um IMAX camera yeah or at least yeah like it, the, it's a very slick looking movie and the big some of the big action sequences yeah. like the car chase that truck doing speak that was all a uh, shot uh for imax yeah and of course like you know your traditional film noir you're not going to get these grand action set pieces on the level of like 
a Dark Knight or any sort of big budget superhero f- film. That's not what you're going to get. But those more human moments, anytime they're in sort of the uh, police station or in that dirty, disgusting, filthy interrogation room, that feels very noir to me. It is um, weird with this version of Gotham that there's like, like, like some of the sets and stuff are, are all seedy. It's like supposed to be this crime ridden city, but then so much of it, the exteriors, I think it's shot in Chicago, right? It's just, it's yes, all very yes. like modern, sleek city. Everything's clean. Everything's glass. Like I do, I do like Gotham as like a mid century art deco industrial oh, gothic it, kind of fantasy. I think fantasy. it's proper. It works, it works in this movie, but I do. Actually, Batman Begins has a little more of that. It's got this like elevated train with this really kind of elaborate architecture that is then totally absent from the later two films. Right. I just Um, remembered. Yeah. But sort of to get back into like the story aspect of what's going on. So sort of the two things, the, the biggest takeaway I took from this movie that I had completely forgotten about probably because it just didn't register in my brain until I actually paid attention. But um, the insinuation is that the Chinese are funding Gotham's like mobs. Well, they're, they said that all, every, every other like money laundering financial institution has been shut down. So their money has to go through Hong Kong. Um, okay. But it is okay. like, I mean, unless that's the thing, like this movie has, I mean, there's like a handful of gestures towards it you can find if you really drill down, but it doesn't really have like any of these movies, a kind of systemic critique, like, like, no. like all of Gotham's problems are basically boiled down to people have lost belief in ideals and goodness and um, they need one guy who's just like a really, who's just a DA who doesn't take bribes they need a white to, ins- to inspire them. And if he, if he turns into a two face and does bad things, the city will die because they'll lose their inspiration. So it, it is very much trading this idea of the importance of mythic symbols and, and individual Morality is driving kind of the state of the society. Um, yeah. Um, so sort of on that note, can we talk a little bit about our cast? Um, because, of course, we have, speaking of Two-Face, Aaron Eckhart, who I think this might be the best movie he's ever been in. Because to my I, understanding, he's just been in nothing but garbage. <laughs> to, I to like Aaron it, Eckhart, but he hasn't been in a lot of good movies. Yeah. He, I, I know he, he was in the um, movie, the guy who did Juno made before. Thank you for smoking, which I think was the reason he was cast as Harvey Dent in this role. Um, I, another movie I haven't seen, um, but I want to just put it explicitly out there that I am a Maggie Gyllenhaal defender as as oh, someone who also great. comes from a long line of pillow-cheeked women, I love Maggie Gyllenhaal. She's I I think she's a queen. Um, I think she has much more of a like actress's presence than Katie Holmes, who played Rachel Dent in she, Batman Begins. She is, and you, she is, you'd she, think she doesn't that, leave much of an impression. In, yeah, but so Batman my Begins. I was under the impression that. Katie Holmes did not return for the Dark Knight because of, you know, some sort of thing with, like, the Church of Scientology. Because, of course, by this point, she was shocked up with Tom Cruise after he went on Oprah's couch and, you know, jumped around on it for a little while. Like, I'm in love! And, you know, once you sort of get into the Church of Scientology's uh, inner circle, they start choosing your projects for you. But um, apparently, she didn't return for this movie because instead she wanted to do... Um, a movie with Queen Latifah that no one remembers uh, it was a movie called Mad Money. Oh, yes. I vaguely remember the just the yes. Title Katie Holmes bell. turned down what is regarded as one of the best movies of the two thousands. One, one of the and one of the yeah one of the biggest movies of the decade. The, um. <laughs> she turned that down for Mad Money, a movie nobody remembers. That I only remembered existing today because I had to look it up. So, do you, do you think how how much do you think she regrets turning turning this down? Uh, I mean, 
you know, I wonder if it's she took a look at the script and was just like, wow, I don't get a ton to do and then I die. Maybe that's why. <laughs> but but even even still, like but Maggie, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal, like Maggie Gyllenhaal, Maggie Gyllenhaal is a huge Gyllenhaal upgrade. Gets one as of the an most actress. important lines in the movie, like one of Rachel Dow's, like Dow's, whatever. Yes, I'm very aware I mispronounce stuff, everybody. Please, please cut me some slack. But uh, Rachel gets one of the most important lines in the movie, in my opinion. It's, you know, at the very end, that letter she wrote to Bruce that Alfred ends up burning at the end. Um, you know, she she writes, please keep your faith in people, um, which I think is is a really important sort of like morally grounding um uh sort of saying um and i i do think her death is very affecting the the um, her, like i mean it's it's that's a very tense scene because again makes, the joker tricks uh, him yeah. by giving you know by switching you know the location saying which is you know don't batman should not trust a single thing the joker says which is his faults, um, but yeah, well, I, I I like Maggie Gyllenhaal jo- quite a Joker's lot. Joker's whole I like thing her is I, I like her a lot. I like I I feel like she's I, I just wish Rachel had a little more in the movie, but then there's no room for yeah. it. So it's like, but like she does a lot with what she gets, and she's like that scene where it's like her and Aaron Eckhart they're tied up, they're about to blow up, and and she's talking to him. She is like she she really makes that scene work um, really well. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm assuming you've seen Secretary. Oh my god, I fucking love Secretary. <laughs> I fucking that is that is another like perfect movie for me. Um, just because I we we kind of talked about it because I was talking about how I really like The Shape of Water, and you were like, yeah, I pegged you for a monster fucker, which is which is not inaccurate, but it's more I really like weird, odd like like romances like a romance with a weird twist to it so if it's like a fish monster or it's like a quirky weird boss who's into bdsm like i love that shit give me more of that shit um i would say yes yeah, secretary is one of I my would favorite love to see movies the, the discourse around that movie if it came out now <laughs> Oh my god! I, People I would, would be. So... I would. I would. I would be ratioed so hard for like defending it because also James Spader is a sex icon. Let's just get that out of the way. Um, but can we let's let's talk about the fucking Joker, baby? Let's talk this, about the fucking this Joker. To me, is 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 one of the things I've been fascinated with for years, um, and I'm really curious to see what you'll make of it. I've got various hypotheses. Is, Throw him out. Throw him out, baby. So so, he, so the Joker really became, and I think there's a kind of a lot of Tyler Durden in there, but he was bigger than Tyler Durden and still is this kind of like icon for, it's just not like exactly one type of guy, but an array of types of people who share a certain like alienation or misfit quality. And yeah. they all love the Joker. They dress up as the Joker. And it's like, I, 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 the, the Joker was iconic as like a Batman villain for being kind of whack, like 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 a mix of wacky and and creepy before this, but like he uh, he didn't he 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 kind of took on a a social ideological re- psycho I don't I don't know what word to use actually resonance yeah, with this well, movie. Well, they they say it multiple times in the movie that he's he's like chaos embodied. He's the chaos factor. Yeah. You know, his what makes him scary is that he has no reason, he has no core methodology. It's it's pure chaos. He's, you know, wild card bitches. Yeah! What? Yeah, it's yeah. he's he's the wild card. He I mean the, the Joker was always that to to some he was always the wild card um or well he's the Joker card, but um Joker's wild. Sorry, I just had like a yeah. chain of it's one of one of many terrible puns we will be making yeah. in this but, episode um, and have already. But I, I want to draw a distinction between what he means in the movie and what and, and it's a plurality of things, what he means to people that kind of took him up as a piece of iconography, which I think are very different. Yeah. Um, I mean, we I don't if if it weren't for this movie, I don't think we would have eventually gotten, you know, the joker movie that no no not that, at all or i mean honestly like we wouldn't have even i don't think gotten the harley quinn stuff 
which would have been a tragedy because I actually, if we ever do reach like, God, I don't want to watch Suicide Squad again. But if we ever do like the Harley Quinn Birds of Prey movie that I actually really, really love that movie. I, mean, I, I think I she's have... really great as Harley Quinn, but um, it's it's the that sort of cultural fixation on the Joker as a character, I think, is just one of the most fascinating aspects of our cultural zeitgeist right now. Like, you know, it's gotten to the point where people are, you know, both transfixed and simultaneously like terrified by what he represents. Like, remember when Joker came out and there were all these. Oh yeah. Oh, there's going to be mass shootings. Like, and- yeah. <laughs> which was, you know, had a lot to do with like, there was the like shooting that happened at the dark Knight rises um, screening, which, you know, a lot of reporters mistakenly described the shooter as like wanting to be the Joker, which there was no evidence of that. But just, other than that, the, he, he had crazy colored hair. That he that had was, crazy that was literally colored hair. Um, but yeah, I, I think it really, this is sort of ground zero for where our current modern fixation on the Joker as like a character and as a cultural touchstone that really hits on a lot of the weird and crazy and Kate let's you know chaotic aspects of what's going on right well, I've, now um, I've, I've I've got some theories and I, I just if yes. I can take a couple minutes to rattle them off yes uh, go so I think okay so in the movie the Joker is a stress test for the moral universe of Batman that's okay. why he's yes. doing all his little yes. he, he's constantly creating trolley problems to 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 pit the characters against their own morality and um and to see what happens to see if if they if they break under the weight of of that or, or not um which is an int- which is what makes the movie i think I- interesting what makes it more than just a decent thriller what gives it some some substance in yeah there are um, real stakes and his motivations are like, and then they, they kind of do say this explicitly in a couple lines. Like what I really thought about it is he has total contempt. You know, he says like, oh, I, everybody's a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Right. Yeah. He has total contempt for everybody that holds themselves up as a moral actor or having some ideals. And he wants to, to break that down. Um, and then, you know, the terms like anarchy are, are kind of, it, you know, it, it, this movie uses anarchy as sort of synonymous with chaos, which is uh, uh, yeah. If, if you've read, if you've I read mean, V for Vendetta, there's there's some people. Yeah, would say well, a very I've seen V for Vendetta. It's it's another one. No, of those... the book, the comic. No, book I haven't. Very, um, the comic book has a line outright. V says, "This isn't anarchy. This is chaos." Because 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 um, Alan Moore is an anarchist, like a politically yeah. like a left anarchist. Um, but. I do think so. I think that the the Joker in the minds of like Nolan and David S. Goyer, whoever, um, my theory is he's supposed to represent like a Osama bin Laden type guy. So like he's supposed to represent I mean, terrorists yeah. and, and people who who upend things, revolutionaries, um, what have you. But what I do think he does, and, and he does it at all, because those people have. They have plans, they have agendas, they have ideologies, they have moral codes. They're just different from whatever it is they're fighting against. Um and and they're violent and what have you, but they have a meth like they're like, you know, Osama bin Laden wasn't a madman. Uh Saddam Hussein wasn't a madman. Hitler it, it was a, a madman in a sense, but within his specific a, delusions, he, he a, there was there a, was a some rationale. Logic in his universe. There was some logic he was. There's oh, there was totally a logic. Like Nazi, like I've been reading Wages of Destruction by Adam Tooze. It's a great book, and 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 Nazi Germany totally followed within the confines of a certain set of assumptions about how the world worked. A a completely rational, they're rational actors. Um, the what the, I think the Joker does capture, like unintentionally, is like like I think he like this Joker, not the the Joker of the the 2018 movie, whatever it was. Right. This Joker does, I think, two things. One, I think, does, even if a little accidentally, does get the mindset of people who aren't like historical actors or terrorists or revolutionaries or what have you, but are like just mass shooters, just people who are kind of nihilistic and broken inside, just lashing out at a world because they have total contempt and loathing for themselves and everyone else. 
Um, I, I do think that is like, like I do think like a lot of your mass shooter guys are on kind of like that. Um, even if they, some of them say, oh, well, it's about race war. I read siege, whatever. Like, I think that's just a, a flimsy justification sitting on top of this core kind of violently yeah. bitter alienated nihilism. And I think that combined with the talk of anarchy and, and overthrowing is because I mean, like, I, I think we can both say we have contempt for the society we live in. It's, it's yes. a very hypocritical, <laughs> very horrible one. Um, I hate America. <laughs> and that, so, so, so his contempt for that, I think, re- and, 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 and that, like, all of that does resonate, like Fight Club, right? Like, it's, it's the dark, yeah. it's the version of that that crosses the line into being totally, like, destructive and, and, and violent without any kind of just right. target. But Although, it does. Again- that does resonate that way. And I think that's part of why, why the Joker became this kind of icon is, is, is from the, on the spectrum from a guy who do a mass shooting to a, a guy who just become like a, a, a leftist uh, activist or whatever. Yeah. That alien um, or, or to just like we people who are kind of weird in high school and got tattoos <laughs> and never fit in. Like he, he wore a he, long he, black trench coat. Yeah, or or like you know those people that are like really into the Joker and they're like like those weird Joker yeah. Harley Quinn couples on YouTube that would just oh like do God. like really lame pranks yes. at the drive through, like like yeah. you, like all of them feel alienated and like they don't fit in in society and to varying degrees of violence and benevolence and thoughtfulness or subconscious whatever like like the Joker character in his contempt and. Uh, 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 rebellion. Uh, well, it's not really rebellion, but but opposition. Define. Yeah. Uh, uh, t- t- stress testing the system and the moral order that is hypocritical uh, resonated, and and so he means like a lot. Like in the specifics of that would vary a lot from person to person. But I think that's my best reason why. And then the the um, Joaquin Phoenix Joker is kind of coming full circle on that. Being like 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 what the original Joker was kind of like missed its target, but landed on something else that resonated. The Joaquin Phoenix Joker, however much you think it succeeds, is coming full circle on that. Like, OK, no, the Joker is a representation of people who are alienated and don't function or fit in within yeah. the system. Yeah, this um, Keith Ledger's Joker, at least the, the Dark Knight Joker he has no core politics. There is no, no yeah, political and, and he's he's not a victim of anything. He's no, he's a he is he's he's a, he's an embodiment of a concept, which is totally which he's, is a he's totally just, fine way to do fiction. Um, he's just the chaos factor. Um, yeah. he's nothing more or nothing less than that, which is what makes him compelling. And of course, you know, we get a lot of dialogue here and there that really sums up what his modus operandi is you know there's the famous line you know some men just want to watch the world burn uh other lines that you know the joker's got no rules there are uh various allusions and just outright statements referring to the joker as a terrorist which of course this is 2008 so terrorist is a very very loaded yeah that's the thing anarchist terrorist like like he is not a good de- depiction of those guys, but 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 he but in their misapprehension of what those guys are, they did land on a really resonant depiction of something else. Yeah, um, and that paired with Heath Ledger's like really great performance and yeah. the character's kind of compelling, it's, weird charisma. He is still really good. Um, and just I was I was well, two thoughts. One was. And I I remember consciously thinking about this, like, when the movie came out. Like, this came out – so this was, like, summer 2008. So I would have been graduating – I would have just graduated eighth grade, but going into high school. Um, So I I remember the Heath Ledger death pretty well. Like, I don't remember where I was that specific day, but I remember it just being really, really tragic. Oh, yeah. Like, my my roommate. Uh, who who was a kid I knew from high school? He had like a Joker poster and and everything. Like it was yeah. Because I was um, in grade ten, yeah, eleven, um, grade 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 eleven when this movie came out. Well, th- so I was thinking was like one. This wasn't the sort of role I think the a person who's like would really be familiar with like Heath Ledger's previous 
you know, screen performances and like persona of what have pegged him for. It seems oh, no, like he was very he was passive like romantic against the type. comedies. Well, he that, was, that was, of course, he was like big in, you know, you know, 10 Things I Hate About You. Um, but then he just, he's just coming off his Oscar nomination for Brokeback Mountain. Oh, right. Um, Brokeback Mountain. Yeah. So he was, yeah, well, that he was, was the breaking big thing. into the, the big draw. He was going from romantic comedies, pretty boy guy to, to, to serious drama. But yeah. Um, every- but the other thing, the other thing I was thinking of, and this is this is solely probably because I have I just watched Southland Tales like last week, which is not my not going to be my. I don't even know if we're going to do like a watch this instead, as so much as like a watch this too. Um, but Southland Tales is is really fucking weird um, and really I- compelling. But um, it occurred to me that. Uh, Heath Ledger Joker comes across very much as like Wallace Shawn. <laughs> um, like I kept oh, I, I the certain text that. he was just reminding me of like, you know, inconceivable, just like the sort of the same sort of like vocal patterns a little bit. Um, you you granted, know what I picked up on this time? Yeah. And I feel I don't know if it's intentional or if it's just my brain connecting dots, but but I felt like there was in addition to kind of like the Tyler Durden element, I feel like that I feel like the Fight Club thing is like they probably saw Fight Club and incorporated some of that into this. But some a strain in in more in in Ledger's performance than anything, just a little mm-hmm. strain of it. Uh, Christian Slater and Heather's. Yeah, no. Ever ever since you brought that up, I have been thinking about that. Um, and you're not wrong. You're not wrong. He like which, very which is like a prototype sort of, of that, and kind of like a prototype of like that very bitter, disaffected, contempt for society guy. Yeah, Heather. You know what we should do? Like that. That would be one I I do a bonus episode on Heather's. That is a Heather's great, is Heather's great is great. Movie. Or just or even just a rundown of like because I kind of consider it like a sort of a subgenre in and of itself of like, you know, the four teenage girl sort of can and you got, you know, your Heathers, your Jawbreaker, your Mean Girls, and uh, one of my favorite movies, Assassination Nation, which is a movie no one went and saw, um, but I fucking love so much. I should see that at some point because you it's, your review was so glowing it made me it's, rethink it's, going it's, and seeing it's that. It's great. Point, I showed it to my it. roommate and uh the spoiler alert, the final line of dialogue is I don't know, for the lulls. And my roommate called it like seconds before the actor (laughs) said it. And the way my roommate cheered, you think like it was like, you know, like a goal made at a soccer match in Europe. Like, yes, yes, oh my God. As as someone who in their like mid-teens was like on 4chan and spinoff boards and IRC and stuff like – Hearing any like the the extent to which that stuff it works so has well, permeated though. the wider culture is still surreal to me even now. Do you think? Do you think the Joker would have been a redditor? Which Joker? That's the well. That's that's the thing. Um, like, let's say, do you think Heath Ledger Joker would have been a redditor? He, Heath Ledger Joker, I think, is not posting. I think he's he's lur- he's like he's like lurking. The most like like websites to find like people's weaknesses and and he's on the dark web infor- yeah to like he's on the dark get web black to like get like um, black market arms and stuff but it, yeah no Jared Leto Joker is the one who's a redditor a, Jared, Jared, yeah, Jared Leto Fucking Joker God. is a redditor and Joaquin Phoenix Joker if he was transposed into the present day he's he's on uh, he's on 4chan he's yeah on, he, he's so- he's on R nine K just like. <laughs> Uh, my mom is so horrible, and I love the I love this girl across the hall. She that movie's okay. Me. I think um, I've. But I've, again, we're we're coming off not fairly recently, but I I feel like I've seen Joker, um, recent enough to sort of compare and contrast both like Joaquin Phoenix and Heath Ledger, and they both do very similar things. Um that really benefit the character. Um, I think Joaquin Phoenix gives a better, like physical, like body performance in the sense that he uses his, well, he uses his, like the thing that struck me when I saw Joker was the way he like would contort his body and like, you know, make himself smaller and just, he, he does the way he would, the way he would move was very, creepy um and not to say keith ledger has a lot of really great physical manner it's, it's kind of hunched me, over it was, for me it was his, 
stumble walk. Yeah, but for me, like Heath Ledger's sort of big ace in the hole is more like the verbal and small ticks he has um, with the character. Like, there's again the the immediate follow up of the you know how do I make a pencil disappear. Like that scene where he's, you know, sitting down and talking to, you know, all the guys in the room. He's just doing, he's doing these like small little things with like his hands, like his, like the corners of his mouth will twitch. And it is, is so compelling to watch. Um, and I think like there was a statement that um, I think like one of the cast members gave, oh, actually I have it right here. One of the actors talked about, how like they they turned to he turned to Christopher Nolan and Christopher Nolan was like we are watching something very special and he specifically said like you know we're we're doing this movie with Gary Oldman who is regarded as you know who they regarded as one of the best working actors in the business and even Gary Oldman was like jaw on the floor like amazed at what Heath Ledger it, was doing it really so, is like a uh and that's the thing is like coming back to this, I was like, I wonder if like all the things we thought were so awesome about this movie in 2008 will still be awesome. And and Heath Ledger's performance is still really, really something. Um, I mean, he I, and I that was a very well-deserved Oscar. Like I remember watching yeah. his family go up and accept it. And it was it was really it was I I was very sad. I was I was very sad to see him go. Like I I wasn't a big I think everyone became a really massive Heath Ledger fan after he passed. Um it, it and really it really is like he's just like you see all of this potential in this performance like who knows what if he got more really good projects where he could have gone and and, and of course and, like i think a lot of the promo material for the movie was very centered on the joker which you know when so when the news came out that oh heath ledger died this morning of a you know accidental drug overdose like they already had you know, six months out until the release, they had all this like promotional material they were sitting on. There's, you know, of course the famous, like why so serious poster that you were yeah. just seeing fucking everywhere. That, like, that was the was, one my, it was the my, like, uh, remember the had. like, uh, uh, the edit of the Obama poster where you'd have like the Joker make. Yeah. On. The Joker Obama, which, which Joke, is so, Joker Obama. Which is, that is such a weird, that, that, that the Joker, the, the Joker Obama thing is such a weird, like, cause I don't, it says so much about, like, I guess the American conservative worldview that they could see anything in common between those two guys. Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> um, but that that is a whole, whole, whole other. Like, I wanted to talk about the politics or lack thereof in this movie naturally, but that is a whole other thing. But um, I do wonder, I'm curious what your take is on this. Is that whole thing where it's like, oh, you know, you do the method acting, you play a dark character, you go to a dark place and it fucks up <laughs> mentally. Is that true? Do you think that really is true? Is that just bullshit? No. My, my thinking is Heath Ledger no. was just a troubled guy, no matter what, whether yeah. or not he played the Joker. He, he he had an existing drug problem, like a lot of actors do. Like Rest in peace, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman, another legend. Oh my God. That Robin Williams still really fucking hurts. Um, I know, I don't think it was ever confirmed Carrie Fisher like died of drug over. Overdose. I think, to my understanding, it was more like the effects of having taken drugs for so just long. Just all, all that coke she did in like, the eighties, just yeah, like made that really, really for, hurt. Um, yeah. And even like, even when I still see like, if I catch Ten Things I Hate About You on television, I see Heath Ledger on there. Like, it's it still, I still feel like a tug at my heart. Like, it still stings, you know. You, but to see that sort of a performance and this was you know famous for being his final completed performance because we mentioned on i think it was the iron oh yeah the imaginarium of dr Parnassus. yeah he that only is, uh, that partly is... completed that um so this was this was his final fully realized performance and uh, like christopher nolan came out and said like yeah we were just we were still in the editing process when he died and we made the conscious decision we're like we're not going to do any sort of digital or like after effects to any of his performance like what you see in this movie is 100 percent him you just um, i mean a doc parnassus is not a good movie from what i remember at all um it's a mess but um i feel like terry gilliam would have way too much integrity to ever do that but man just imagine if he died making while well, making a marvel movie or something they oh totally my God. would they totally would CGI. do that cgi face swap 
bullshit. I I really hate that. Look like fucking that Peter is... Cushing in Rogue One. God, that gross. I hate that. That is, it is. It's so gross. It's so. It feels just, and, and I mean, like I, 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 I'm not like a like like I mean, I feel like art and movies, and everything should be able to really go there with a lot of things, but that one just it sits wrong, man. Yeah, it bothers me. It's just like this. This Ugh. actor has no say in what you're making them do, you know, which is like f- fine for like a a soundboard jib jab thing that you amuse yourself for two minutes on the computer but for a movie yeah yeah Yeah, it it instead it always comes off like uh the like the episode of the sopranos they did after the actors who played live died so like the final on screen appearance is nothing but like really obvious and uncanny like cut out footage of like previous scenes she did and it's it, so off that 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 scene because i did what rewatch the sopranos re- fairly recently and that scene really almost and, and it's short it's and i feel so and I, I, I feel like that they were they were doing the best they could like that didn't feel disrespectful just just people just like having to catch a it, real curve it ball. was it was like 2001 this was yeah. this was still years before like digital de-aging technology came out so but, this wasn't but just, any just like the of... way it's edited and the way they're putting in like unrelated clips to make her respond just kind of felt like um Ugh. felt like uh bella lugosi in um planet nine yeah yeah in plan <laughs> plan, nine. plan nine um yeah uh so what else what else should we talk about well there there are like a couple things because i know our angle here is we're we're really trying to look at sort of the um, you know, looking at yeah. some of the political aspects, and there, there are a couple things that I kind of raised my eyebrows about. This, I mean, that- it's, it's a common thing to interpret this movie as just like a neoconservative defense of George Bush. But I don't really, which know I if no, the, I don't see that. I can see, I can see how people get there, but I think it's a very, it's 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 too shallow a reading. I don't think it's giving the movie quite enough credit. Yeah, I think that's I. I don't see that, but um, there. One thing I did raise my eyebrow at was uh, like Alfred has this sort of little story he tells Bruce about how he went to Burma and you know he was going after this thief that was just like throwing rubies away because he didn't really care about their value. Um, and yeah. I just wrote, I just because that's notes. how you lead a that's how you lead a bandit gang is you don't reward the bandits that work for you. Like, so, like it, it's a good scene dramatically, but it doesn't make any yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> it, and it's a it's a world. it's a good monologue. Um, hold on, who plays Michael Caine? Uh, Michael Caine. I can't believe I said who plays Michael. Oh my, it's Michael fucking Caine. Michael Caine. Who my Michael Caine as as Alfred is also just perfect. Pretty great. Like, I don't I don't think we see Alfred as any other actor now. Like I think, um, Michael Caine has really put a like dis that's that's his role that's his role like i don't really see even when i see like other batman movies it's just like i was michael Caine. um but yeah he alfred is giving that little speech and he and i just wrote in my notes like why was alfred in burma and then eventually he gets around to like the conclusion of that story which was you know what what did you how did you get rid of or how did you deal with that thief and he says oh we burned the entire forest down so alfred was in burma just burning down forests in like the 1970s which Uh, seems criminal i I mean i guess i wonder i mean that's after that's after independence from britain unless it was Mm. was supposed to be earlier than that yeah what Um, alfred what the what the fuck were you doing between I mean, the Michael, years of 1969-1985? Uh, Michael Caine was in Zulu, right? Like, he's been in some of those, like, British Imperial movies. So I wonder if that was, like, a reference to that. Z- I, Zulu, I don't know. Zulu, which is sort of enough. like 300, but it's 100 British soldiers with the latest in, in <laughs> 20th century weaponry against God, three, thousands 300 of guys with British people. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's, it's I've heard it's actually like again like a movie where it's like a really good movie if you can set aside the like British imperial politics of it. Um, but that is like it's because it's loosely based on a real event, which is like a small a small garrison garrison of British soldiers fought a large force of uh, Zulu uh, warriors. Um, 
when uh, Britain was securing its hold over South Africa in the in the late eight, very late eighteen hundreds. And I, I, maybe it's 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 kind of like a reference to that. Uh, yeah, and then there are also there's also the the pivotal plot point, which is that um, Lucius Fox has developed some sort of technology that uses cell phones to like triangulate the coordinates uh, and give you like a map readout of a specific area, and that also simultaneously um, becomes the reason that. Bruce is able to like wiretap into every f- cell phone in Gotham City. Yeah, yeah, the to, phone which, the phone works as a, a sonar basically and then he he makes every phone in Gotham a sonar and Lucius Fox is all like this is this is too far. Yeah, so so Bruce Wayne is basically the NSA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, which, and this is this is where the movie I think is is sort of interesting in its politics is it's like I think like very much like Iron Man it is a a liberal response to the Bush era in 9-11 and like trying to – whereas Iron Man is kind of a very simple redemption like, oh, I won't sell weapons to terrorists anymore, but otherwise I'm a good guy and I use my Iron Man suit to be good things. I'm, I'm just like America in World War II saving the day. I feel like d- rather than being like a neocon Bush apologia, despite being like more aesthetically militaristic and, and, and harder edged, I think The Dark Knight is – even though it ultimately comes down on the side, like I know it's the other recurring theme that was like the noble lie, which I want to get to. It kind okay. of ultimately still comes down on the side of like we need to believe in America and in our uh, in our ideals and in our our role in the world. But I think it's a lot more actually ultimately a lot more ambivalent about it than Iron Man. It's a it's a lot more. It's um it it at least really asks and isn't entirely confident in answering like should anybody have this power can you like do we need to have this power to stop this kind of specific threat and even if we do have it we should dispose of it responsibly you know they have the the story of um uh, they don't they don't name them name check them in the movie but the story of cincinnatus the the semi mythical guy who assumed the role of of dictator in rome to to fight a war and then uh well, I, relinquished yeah, his well, power i know and there's the uh uh Rachel brings up like you know Caesar at one point like she and um Harvey are at like dinner and then Bruce walks in with a prima ba- ballerina from the Russian uh ballet company um and they're just you know they're shooting the shit and just, just kind of talking about their differences and um political ideals of like how to handle crime in the city and um one of them is you know talking about like oh well you know you know a man rose to power like when they needed him most um oh wait no i wrote that's another thing i wrote down uh hold on it is uh yeah when die a hero when, or live long enough to be a villain no it is uh forget who says it uh but when oh when their enemies were at the gates, the Romans would suspend democracy and appoint one man to protect the city. Um, and then Rachel's like, "Yeah, that man was Caesar, and you know what happened to him." Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's Dent who tells that story. Yeah, that's and, that's Harvey Dent. Um, but and, and of course, but so yeah, that, the, that's the that's the. St- I mean, a lot of guys did that in Roman history, but the the legendary ideal one in their own mythology was Cincinnatus, who is the namesake of the city of Cincinnati. Yeah. Because the um, the founding fathers were really into the Roman Republic. Can we talk a little bit about the hospital scene? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because, I mean, that's sort of like, A, you get the big reveal of, you know, Harvey, like after the uh rescue uh where you know rachel's killed by uh harvey because he you know fell like half his face first into like sulfuric acid their, or whatever, their way of putting him oil. in a position to be injured in exactly that way is a little contrived and, and <laughs> I'll, I, I'll I have to say the effect at at first glance the effects still look good but then it kind of moves and it seems a little like video game it's it is it's not quite um, I, I wish that they just had a gross prosthetic yeah and then, and then maybe I'm always they a prosthetic person say and i mean you can like maybe like give the eye a little movement with uh with um you can, like, you can, like do cgi to like 
give it a little more movement and stuff than it would have normally and then kind of hide the seams. But I, I kind of wish they'd, they'd done a prosthetic instead of just like a whole CGI thing. So yeah, it doesn't, it it doesn't looks, quite it, yeah. work. I think even when the movie came out, I remember seeing it was all CGI and I would be like, ah, I kind of, I mean, it's, I kind of like when he takes a shot and it dribbles out the hole in his face. Yeah, that, that's a nice detail, but the whole time, like they make a point of saying that Harvey Dent is denying not only like skin grafts, but, uh, like pain relief. And so th- theoretically he is in agonizing fucking pain this entire time. That's that's actually yeah. I, that's something I, <laughs> I think maybe in part because it's CGI and it just feels less real. That's something you don't think about. But I kind of wish they maybe they'd emphasize that a little more, like the extent yeah, because to which he's just he, his, again. He's just this man terrible. has had half of his fucking face horrifically burned out. You can see the tendons in his face, like you can see through his mouth, like you can see his like back molars. Yeah, it he is, would it be is a good he design. would be in. The worst like, fucking pain you can imagine. Conceptually. And then and then the fucking Joker shows up and he's wearing a shake and go wig. And <laughs> we forget we forget that we get sexy Joker in this movie. And we the, don't talk and, yeah, about with the, the red fact wig that and the nurse outfit, Joker it's shows pretty up. Good. Which which is which is played a little bit for laughs. Um like of of course there's the shot of the Joker, you know, walking away from the hospital with the uh like bomb trigger and it doesn't go off and for us and he's like what the fuck and then you know everything starts exploding behind him and he's kind of like ah Uh, again wearing this fucking nerd like sexy nurse outfit i've heard which is that is it is a sexy nurse outfit that is not like a standard (laughs) nurse so theoretically oh yeah you're right it is like a a sexy nurse outfit joker went to like party city or this is well this is 2008 so presumably like i party Went out of his way to go to like I party and got a sexy nurse outfit, and I do kind of wish that was a scene. I do kind of wish that was a scene, like him just the Joker holding up this fucking party city and being like, "I need your sexiest, I need your sexiest nurse outfit." I don't know why I did it like that, but um, yeah, that is that is a scene I wish existed. That that would be. Yeah, again, that's one of those things that's like, if this movie wasn't already just just shy of exploding like Mr. Creosote, it would be. Also, wait, wait, one more thing. I I would I would kick myself if I didn't bring this up. But you know, uh the part where they're trying to um just before the uh uh you know funeral parade goes down and Bruce is, you know, with Gordon, they're trying to find out like who who is ex- like track down where the Joker lives, and they throw out a name. His name is Melvin White, and I don't know if that is a name that has any, um, uh, like, relevance to, like, the comics, but I did think of fucking, and you're going to hate me for this, I, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, Melvin, Melvin, brother of brother the Joker. Brother of the Joker, yeah, yeah, I was thinking of that as soon as he said it. <laughs> so, wait, so it was... Was that like, I mean, that for all we know, that was just like an alias, but I would really like to think that Heath Ledger Joker's real name is Melvin. Uh, there, there's nothing funnier to me than like an, a, a crazy like villain whose name is just fucking Melvin. <laughs> I, I looked it up. It doesn't seem like it's a. There, there, there was an actual criminal with that name in Texas. I doubt that that's intentional. Um, uh, the Batman fandom wiki page on Melvin White is just from this movie. It's not a reference to anything else in the comics, okay. discernibly. Uh, there is one theory here uh, that it's a reference to Mel Blanc, because Blanc is white in French. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. Um, but I think but- like, that's someone, they just need it. That just sounds like a name generator name. <laughs> Melvin, Melvin, brother of the Joker. Um, and then also, the like, fact that the climax is literally the trolley problem with the it is what I saying, yeah, he all of everything he'd like i mean the 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 choice like save dent or rachel like like everything the joker does is rachel because trolley problems are supposed to be a stress test of morality but to me the trolley problem is always obvious like you can 
you can have one guy die or five people die. One guy dies. Like it's, it's to me, this is the math is like easy math. I don't know. Maybe I'm philosophically un, underdeveloped. Um, well, but, but the Charlie problem the, never seemed like much of a problem. It's a you know you know blow up the ferry full of criminals and you know police personnel, or blow up the ferry full of like regular civilians. And I I believe are they just civilians or are they the people who are evacuated from the hospital? I don't know. I didn't okay. see anybody that looked hospitally there, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, neither did. I. Well, no, the the I believe the hospital um, survivors they were in the building, um, disguised as like being held hostage, disguised as like the joke. Oh movies. yes, at least. Oh that's, right, yeah. yeah, that's that's or at least that was the staff, I think. Which yeah, which um, again, this movie does several very like smart, and I don't I don't want to necessarily say subversive but like clever things like yeah. the reveal with like the reveal that gordon cole hasn't died i thought was like how that was revealed was <laughs> very... <laughs> what you said gordon cole gordon cole oh my god okay gordon see <laughs> batman <laughs> i had okay, one of my I... monica bellucci but don't, dreams but again don't you want to see david lynch play like, i would i would gordon. love to see david lynch play um Play, I would say uh, Commissioner David Gordon Lynch play anything as uh, as Gordon Cole <laughs> as Gordon Cole. Bruce, <laughs> we have a robbery. <laughs> I can't stop. I just I can't stop just thinking about it. I can't stop laughing. That would be the man uh, is afraid of bats. Yeah, if I if I ever get a chance to make a Batman movie and David Lynch is still alive, I'm I'm going to fight tooth and nail to make that happen. Which I mean is is not going to happen, but man, oh that'd be so good. Oh, they're just they're well. Have you seen the trailer for the um the new the the Batman? I haven't seen the trailer. No, is there one out? It's now? yeah, no, it's been out for a while, and like so, I it came on just before Nightmare Alley, um, and just my whole the whole like first of all, it you know I think Robert Pattinson pretty sexy as Bruce Wayne. Um, but also, I, I to to quote Nicole Richie, I love boys who look like they're dead and dying. Um, but the whole like it's after a good the, look. I, I like women that look is. like that too. Um, but like it very much was giving me Dark Knight vibes. Like to the extent, like the aesthetic was very very similar. Um, which again says a lot to how much staying power this movie has. To the fact but, that movies are, super, and not just like superhero movies, but like a lot of movies in general are still striving towards the Dark Knight. Like the Dark Knight yeah. is still like, you ask, again, you ask the average person, like, what's the greatest superhero movie of all time? And they will probably say the Dark Knight. And unless um, they're and like it's not deep reason. enough in the tank for the MCU, they'll say one of the Avengers movies, probably. Yeah. Pro- yeah. But no, it's, but, I mean, it's probably like, what are like the genuinely great? superhero movies or like really like the top of that spider-man year, like, 2 spider-man 2 Sp- i haven't uh, seen that I haven't in a while but shows in a long time so... um uh batman returns i would say it's a controversial choice probably not not one a lot of people would say but personally i really like that movie a lot i really like michelle pfeiffer in it i really like michael keaton i really enjoy danny devito danny just fucking devito gross. um Oh, uh, I, Chris will be, for, I, I will be Chris crushed when Danny too. DeVito dies. Oh, oh me too. I, I won't leave. I won't leave my house for a week. Which it's it's amazing to me. He had like this whole career, and then like I think maybe like ha- achieved his 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 greatest like very late in his career managed to like achieve his greatest role on a a, a sitcom that for its first half of its run nobody watched. Where where he literally crawls <laughs> out of a couch naked and covered in lube, and yeah. that man d- still does not have an Emmy. Um, like that is that is commitment. Like the things Danny DeVito has done in Sonny are just like things any like actor would look at and be like, I am not fucking doing that. <laughs> and he just it. does that because he loves to, and we love him for it. Yeah. Um. But sort of. Anything else we want to talk about in terms of the Dark Knight? I, the the only sh- other, well, the only other thing I was thinking of is: Do you think at some point, like obviously before Keith Ledger died, do you think at some point, like Christopher Nolan 
had thought like, okay, we're going to bring the Joker back in like the third movie. Do you think there was any plan for that? Because they do literally leave the Joker hanging. Yeah. Like at I, the end of the movie, he's literally hanging. You know what? I mean, I'm always skeptical of claims that like everything was planned out when it comes to movies. Oh, it wasn't. Because almost every time people say it, like if you would like look into it, it all turns out to be true, whether it's like George Lucas or the Marvel stuff or or, or whatever. Um, I don't know if they had I don't want to call them plan. I don't know if they had plans, but I think they had notions. I think they're like this. This worked so good. Their dichotomy, uh, you know, the chaos versus order, like having a moral code versus not believing in anything. Like that was, you know, nihilism versus idealism, whatever. Like that was so central. I assume that I don't know if they had plans, but I imagine they had notions, some idea that they wanted to come back to it, and they had to kind of maybe go from come up with something totally new when he died. Well, but, uh, I, I mean, I don't know I, if there was, I doubt there was like a script written already or anything. No, um, um, I mean, I would have thought again, because they, they had already like, I, I've, and I'm, this is, this is coming from someone who, again, instead of spending time researching, I played fucking Pokemon. Um, but I, I would have thought that because like the Batman Begins was successful enough and I, I don't know if, whether they like greenlit the Dark Knight with the expectation of it being a trilogy or having, you know, another sequel. I don't know if those were like greenlit together or separately, I, but I don't um, think so. Did, for a moment, it does seem because, again, at the end, the we don't see, you know, what happens to the Joker after he's like apprehended, you know, by the SWAT team. We don't like I again, I haven't seen The Dark Knight Rises in a, a long time, and I don't know how much mention is given to him in that but it just None. It, it seems None whatsoever okay. he's just not he's totally absent from that movie which i think so is it maybe just, it just seems like choice they they one. at least left it open for the joker to return um at least but at least that's just my impression from the end of the movie um because they don't again you don't see like they're not literally there's not literally a scene where they're locking joker up and like yeah. him. I I assume they had some idea that they wanted to, but I don't think there's any concrete plans. But I mean, you know, I de- like especially if you're like have an auteur who's got like a pretty good grip at the helm. I imagine that like you know ideas and notions gestate as you go. So he might have had to like re uh, just personally like rethink what he wanted to do with the next one. But I don't I don't think there's like any concrete yeah. plans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was um, there was somewhat of a delay. I believe because I, I do remember thinking like, oh, it's it's been a while since the Dark Knight has come out and we still haven't heard anything about, you know, the sequel. Um, so, yeah, I, I think probably Heath Ledger's death probably threw a wrench in some stuff, um, at least early, like sort of floating ideas before if for any sort of real script was written or fi- let alone finalized for the Dark Knight Rises. Um, but yeah, uh, do we want to move on or sort of conclude with like what? And again, because this is, I, I think our take here is very similar. Like, this is a good movie for a it is. It's, movie. it's this a, is, it's a, this is a, it's good, a good movie. movie. Uh, um, so it's not it, necessarily it, like, it's, it, please it's, watch something else, you fucking yeah. consumer pleb, as so much as, you know, oh, here's what to watch. Also, yeah, yeah, to yeah. supplement um, to you know supplement your horizons to go beyond you know just consuming comic book um, IPs. Um, so you know we all already threw out like Michael Mann's Heat um, or just Michael Mann movies in general. I again I still need to see Heat. Yeah, but Heat Heat Thief, is great. I haven't seen Thief all of his great Collateral with uh, Tom Cruise playing a bad guy, which is something that we need more of. I kind of think that's when he's at his best. He also um, just seems very villainous. Yeah, I before we we move on though, there was something I wanted to I touched on briefly. I wanted to go back yeah. to, which is the, one of the recurring themes in this movie is kind of like the idea of uh, a noble lie, like cho- choosing to believe or present something that upholds your beliefs and ideals and doesn't undermine them, because you can't let the truth undermine the things you need to believe that in the logic of the movie are what hold society together. So like, um, uh. Uh, you know, uh, Alfred Burns Rachel's letter saying that she was ultimately going to friend zone Batman and, and marry Harvey Dent. Uh, yeah. Batman takes the blame for all the bad things Two-Face did 
so that Harvey Dent can remain an icon. Um, uh, Commissioner Gordon fakes his death and lies yeah. to Dent yeah. and his family. Like it's it's a recurring, really huge recurring theme of the movie is this idea of of. But I mean, some of those like lies arguably lead to making things. So, like like this movie is basically liberal, but there's there 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 is an ambivalence. Like it kind of there's a there's it, it a undercuts. cynicism that's not there in a lot of other yeah comic it, it book under it, it has its positions, but it also kind of undercuts them a little bit. Like I I think Christopher Nolan movies often are like trying too hard to be clever and are treated as a bit smarter than they are. But I think this movie is the one of the rare cases now where there's a little bit of a reverse. I don't think it's just a uh, a simple uh, Bush was right and Batman is Bush taking the blame for doing things that needed to be done. Um, but it is like it is can we come back to this idea like 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 if we look at like Batman's morals and 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 dense morality. And, you know, this belief in like they talk about, like literally says one point people are ready to believe in good, which that that kind of doesn't mean anything to me, like believe in good as if like society is bad because we just like I don't know, just ways you could like it's it's I think like this movie is it is responding to the Bush era, but I think it's trying with varying of degrees of success or or not to to like, I don't think it should be read as a direct a uh, representation of the immediate political moment, but it's trying to get at it, it's trying at least to get at larger themes undergirding that that you can then yeah. reframe for other things, which is why I think it it's still kind of yeah, it has salient holds themes, up. which is um, what makes a real movie a movie. Yeah, like like it's in my not opinion. it's it's not like a, a an effective political thesis, but I think it's 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 at, it's it's trying, and there are things in there. Like like any decent movie that you can take and 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 reframe and interpret and and read into, but that that noble lie thing I keep coming back to the idea that people's because like, if you look at America like America after the Iraq War has done all these horrible things, it's done all this torture, but then within the liberal imaginary, there's this ideal of what America should be and and represents to itself and and in the world and its role, and it's trying to reconcile like. Or in general, like I think after the Iraq War, Amer- uh, liberal Americans are trying to reconcile like their their need to believe in American exceptionalism and the reality of American imperialism, and where this movie is kind of coming down on this noble lie element is like we need to we 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 can't do these horrible things. We have to be like Batman, and we have to draw a line. We have to destroy the surveillance equipment, like say, oh, loose like uh, Michael um, Morgan Freeman types his name into that big surveillance apparatus and it blows up and it doesn't yeah. stick around. So we need to be able to draw lines, but we also still need to hold to our ideals. We need to be able to even lie to protect those ideals from being totally destroyed because the ideals are, are more important. Yeah. Are, 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 are so important in and of themselves and that without ideals, without belief in good, society falls into decay. And I think, I mean, there is some truth to needing belief. Not Belief in good is too trite, but, but needing belief in in something but at the same time i'm not a believer in um personally like one i don't think particularly in the context of america that it's its ideals are too corrupted too hypocritical in themselves too flawed and incomplete to justify lying to defend and, and perpetuate but in general i just i don't believe in lying to protect uh, uh an ideal or a truth or or a needed image and, and then i had one last take kind of related to that um mm-hmm. uh Harvey Dent is Leon Trotsky and and uh, uh, Batman is Stalin. Okay. <laughs> Tr- Trotsky okay. was too idealistic and ran aground on his own ideals, and only Stalin could 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 be pragmatic and do what what needed to be done. Um, to to be the Dark Knight and 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 compromise okay. his ideals to save the revolutionary project uh, from Nazism. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not, right. that's, that's, not, that's not a super Okay, I'm not going to argue against it, but you know, everyone's entitled to their interpretation. Um, the the real the real version of that take is is Harvey Dent as Bush, who turns evil and crosses the line after being the hero responding to 9/11, and Batman presages uh, Obama. See, I would have I would have put Dent in the position. Well. Again, because Within, this was released. With, this this movie this came is before, out before Obama. The that's collect, uh, that's pro- that's projecting on the movie what's not actually yeah, intended um, there. But I think it's it represents the liberal imaginary where Obama 
did a, a lot of the same horrible things as Bush did, but he didn't quite cross where they put the line in terms of how American empires enforced. He, he just had a and different he, face. He preserved the ideals. He yeah. kept up the noble lie that is important enough to be worth keeping up, despite being compromised and doing all these horrible things. But he didn't go from being Batman to being Two Face. Um, right. Um, uh, so I don't. I don't know. I was. I was going to suggest. I last night I watched uh, Assault on Precinct Thirteen because it's John Carpenter. Because it was ninety minutes and I was really tired. Um, and you know, I was just trying to find something like you know, in the same sort of vein of like, you know, criminal underworld and, you know, fighting back. And that, that is also a very good movie. Um, I liked that more. Um, but then again, I, I do really like John Carpenter I've, and I think I've, it's a I fucking travesty. He's not making movies anymore. I've, I've never seen Assault on Precinct 13. It's one of my it's good. Uh, Carpenter it's good. It's, it's, it's the closest thing to a zombie movie that John Carpenter ever made. And you'd think John Carpenter would have made a zombie movie, but he never did. Um, and I think that was he he really wanted to make a zombie movie. And this is this is like this instead of zombies, zombies are like multicultural LA thugs and gangs. And my, that's, my understanding it, it, is he always wanted to make it's kind of that, but he also always wanted to make westerns, and you can kind of you can see that yeah. running oh, through yeah, all yeah, these movies. Yeah, that that very much so. Western elements. Um, but I mean, you you like John Carpenter, so yeah, I, I, I would def- definitely. I'm definitely gonna gonna watch it at some I would point. I need to watch that and Prince that. of Darkness, which I've never seen. Um, Prince of Darkness, I didn't like as much, mostly because I was bothered by the fact that grad school students didn't look up. Um, and you understand <laughs> what that means when you see that movie. Um, but yeah, I guess sort of my recommendation for what to watch in addition to if you like really are really 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 into the dark night um and you know just you're open to seeing other things then definitely check out anything in michael mann's filmography yeah or he, he collateral i'd 13. say um in particular heat and collateral which i need to rewatch. um so I think I, I do want to say Batman Returns. I know, like we normally want to steer people away from more comic book movies. I just think it's it's a, a kind of like half That's, forgotten movie. I mean, um, the, 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 still, the Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman is still fucking iconic. Yeah, yeah, like that is still um, an iconic look. Like I would love. That's another like dream cosplay idea. If like conventions ever come back, like I'd I'd try to really. Oh, get that into would be so good. That. I would be I'd that be would, thrilled if you'd. I love that costume. It's, I, I, that's such a like. I, I and again, this movie has Danny DeVito in it. What more do you want? Yeah. Um. So S- yeah, stack cast. It's yeah. It's 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 just it's such a very different take on Batman. It's a kind of an interesting contrast. Um. And uh, it's got a lot of great production design, great cast, uh, and, and it kind of shows yeah. like I feel Before like I Tim prefer Burton comic. Hack. Yeah, and, and I prefer. I think it's more interesting when comic book movies are uh, tour works that modify the source material in a specific way because i mean comic book characters are always being re-modified anyway versus um attempting to like slavishly adapt this or that arc or, or version because i think like the dark knight isn't that but it's it's definitely indebted to the like frank miller dark knight returns kind of yeah. vision of batman um i'm trying to think of something if i had anything else i'd recommend like a a kind of thriller i'm trying to draw a blank and uh, i know i know people uh mentioned a clockwork orange as an inspiration to the joker's character which i personally don't see that, very much um I, but very w- it, please watch a clockwork orange yeah that that's is, a good movie. watch watch any um, kubrick movie kubrick is a king um I mean, this, oh, you know we what? are um, we are recording this just a couple days before Christmas, so maybe maybe this can be our chance to recommend people to watch Eyes Wide Shut, which is a Christmas movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, um, hardly obscure at all a movie, but uh, you know, if if uh, if the Dark Knight is kind of trading in 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 noirish elements, which has always been a little bit in Batman's DNA to varying degrees from the oh, it's the, very noir inspired from the very beginning movie iterations. Well, even I think the original comics starting in like 1940. Had oh, absolutely. Kind of traded. It was like that and Zorro, right? Were the big, but uh, Chinatown. 
I have not seen looking, Chinatown. Uh, a neo noir with a with a real real downbeat ending and uh, city corruption and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, Ch- oh, Chinatown is great. Chinatown rules. That's an awesome movie. And, and um, another another great movie by a guy a director who did some questionable things. But you know what we. To say we're, the least. we're not here to give our takes on Roman Polanski. <laughs> I mean, he's very old. He's he's got he's to die. Very soon fucking and, old. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Bad bad person made some some great, great films. Movies. I did not like him in Tenant. Uh, the Tenant, though, I thought he was he's he's uh, he is not an actor. <laughs> he he. The last like thirty minutes of that movie, he's running around in like a terrible like sh- another terrible wig. Um, and I just, I just wanted to see more Isabella Johnny. I, I just think it's in, um, in, in, uh, just say something about Roman Polanski in, um, in, did you notice in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he's, he's, he's dressed like Austin Powers. Yeah. <laughs> was, was the Austin Powers costume based on Roman Polanski? Like yes. he's dressed like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the seventies. Or the, uh, the 60s, like 60, excuse me. 68, 69, 60, yeah. Like, yeah, 68, 67, 68. I'm just, 69. I am kind of imagining like Austin Powers trying to groom a 14 year old girl. Do I make he, you oh, horny, he absolutely baby? would have, though. <laughs> he was like, his whole thing was like, I'm a horny guy. You think he would have asked girls their age beforehand? No. ASL, um, baby, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, um. So thank you for listening, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank we're we're going to end it with Austin Powers another, grooming an underage a, another girl. Another episode. <laughs> I think I think that's a strong a strong way to end. So um, that's a, as good of a way to end as we could have hoped. I uh, is there anything else you can you can think of in the intervening time period, or should we um, move on ahead to Iron Man two with our next? Uh, we're main episode? we're going to have to do Iron Man two next. So we're we're uh, this is this is this is probably going to feel like going from like eating a really good like delicious burger to like something that's shot it's kind of been like sitting in the fridge for a few 7-11, hours yeah 7-Eleven heat lamp um, been there for two days yeah yeah now we're 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 we, we've it, so far we've seen a decent movie uh a bad a, movie a bad movie and a good movie and a good movie. And now we're going to watch another bad movie and probably a lot more bad movies. Yeah. But you know um, what? We're, 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 we're getting there. We're getting there. They're, they can't all be, they they aren't all turds. They can't all be turds. No, but uh, this is, uh, <laughs> in, 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 until we, we start doing side episodes and we watch stuff like Possession, this is probably the oh best God. movie we're going to talk about for uh, a while. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, until next time, everybody. Until next time. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, where we are, our, we are all officially published and uploaded. So yep, we're on Twitter. Uh, we are, hold on, let me, what is our Twitter name? Cause if you believe it or not, there were a lot of iterations of our podcast name that have already been taken. Marvelous. Follow us at Marvelous Death on Twitter. Um, uh, you know, s- subscribe on your preferred app. Please, uh, if you're enjoying the show, please do the like and review thing. Uh, it's always super appreciated. If you don't like the show, please don't leave a review. If that you don't like the show, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> just, just don't say anything. You, you don't have to say anything. Just shut up. Don't post. We're not taking any criticisms. You, you, uh, imagine if you don't like this show, you you aren't still here three episodes, three two hour episodes in. We, just, um, we have our hate listeners. I think if if you can be compelling enough that people hate listen to you, you're onto something. Uh, oh so yeah, oh crossed. absolutely. But um, uh, yeah, the, um, that would be the episode. We'll see you again. Um, I suppose with Christmas and everything. Uh, yeah, in the weeks, new year, yeah. we'll new see year. you. Actually, in 2022, might, baby. You're probably already Although this, listening this to this. This is going to come yeah. out in 2022. Yeah, because we're we have uh, we're we're a few weeks ahead, I think, of our release schedule. So, all right. So uh, again, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, we I hope because uh, it is December 22nd right now. I hope you have already had a great holidays and a great new year, and that 2022 is better than uh, 2020 and 2021. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.